What up, what up, what up guys, Eric here, welcome back to another breakdown, here we go, we got passage number three of the Blueprint Full Length Exam, okay, this is a free exam, go ahead, go on their website, they'll give you a free diagnostic and a free FL, so that's pretty, pretty cool, so I'm going to show you guys exactly how to break this passage down, I'm going to show you guys how to highlight, how to pick the best answer, how to make all these details make sense, okay, this is a CP passage, and a lot of you guys, for some reason, I get more views on the CP than the BB. I think it's because people struggle with CP more. All right. Maybe it's the physics. Maybe it's the gen chem. Maybe it's the mole to mole, all this stuff going on. Who knows? But I'm going to show you guys exactly how to break this down and how to get that 132. Bam. All right. So as always, guys, go ahead and do the passage and answer the questions on your own first and then hear me break it down. Okay. I'm going to scroll down here. Pause it whenever you need to. Okay. Or go ahead, you know, go on the website, make an account and get this. I'm not sponsored. Not yet, at least. This is the first question. Write down your answer for that one. 11. Okay, pause whenever you need to. Write down your answer for that. Write down your answer for that one. And that's it. Okay, that was a short passage. All right. So write down your answers. And hopefully you guys get all of it right. This is how you break it down. Let's go. The characteristic fragrance of Chanel number no. Oh, Chanel. Okay. All right, MK, I see you, you bougie. All right, the characteristic fragrance of Chanel Number no. Five, one of the world's most well-known perfumes, is due almost wholly, wholly to two methyl undecanel. All right, so I'm gonna highlight this. All right, what we got? We got the fragrance. The fragrance is due to this, this compound, a compound found naturally in kumquats. I do not know what kumquats are, but it's okay. The compound exists in two enantiomeric forms, although professional perfumers note that the two enantiomers possess nearly identical scent profiles. All right, here we got the two enantiomers of this, and they're very, very similar, the smell. Cool. All right, we don't look at the figure. Don't waste time looking at these figures. Only when the question asks for it, you look at the figures, guys. We don't want to waste time doing that. A chemistry class conducted an experiment to separate 2-methyl-undecanal from 2-methyl-undecanoic acid. Okay, note the difference between those. One's an aldehyde, one's an, uh, a carboxylic acid. By carrying out a distillation of a liquid consisting solely of these two components. Due to the high boiling points of these compounds, the class was instructed to carry out a vacuum distillation. You guys should know the difference between vacuum, simple, and a fractional distillation, okay? Students began by placing 200 milliliters. All right, I'm highlighting what sticks out at me. Whatever sticks out at you, you highlight. Okay, I may be different than you. It's okay. 200 milliliters of liquid mixture in a round bottom flask and adding several boiling chips. Okay, very low yield, but you should know what boiling chips do. They prevent superheating of the solution or liquid. The solution was slowly heated with distillate collected in the receiving flask. You should also know that too, guys. A lot of you guys missed that, all right? Distillate is one that uh, boils first and ends up here. Students noted that the round bottom flask still held approximately 50 milliliters of liquid at the end of distillation. And that's their setup, and all right, that's it. These guys, who said the MCAT's hard? Who said that? They're lying. Okay, this is easy. Which of the carbons in 2-methyl-undecanal below is our chiral? Guys, I thought the MCAT was hard. Let's see. All right. That's so easy. Chiral. A chiral molecule is something that's bonded to four different substituents. All right. So let's look at one. It's bonded to three things. Therefore, it's a chiral. It's not chiral. Let's look at two. It's bonded to one, two, three, four different things. Therefore, it is chiral. Two is chiral. Three is bonded to one, two, and then it's bonded to two hydrogens, which are the same. Okay. Therefore, three is a chiral. The only one that is chiral is two. It's that, it's that easy. <laughs> it's that easy, guys. Everyone should be getting 132s. If you're watching my channel, you should be getting 132 easily. Another possible method of separating 2-methyl-undecanal and 2-methyl-undecanoic acid can be based on... Oh, I love this. I love this question so much. This is very high yield, guys. This is very, very MCAT wording right here. Very, very MCAT wording. Make sure you guys understand this question, okay? What are these? 
okay, these are two different molecules, very similar, except one's an aldehyde and one's a carboxylic acid. So you should know the properties between those. A, there are differences in the rotation of plane polarized light. This is wrong, okay? Only enantiomers have, you know, one um, rotates plane polarized one way and the other one rotates plane polarized another way. Like, these two are enantiomers, okay? Maybe this one rotates uh, light in the levatory direction, levatory direction. Maybe this one does it in the dextratory direction, okay? But if they're enantiomers, they have to do it in opposite directions, all right? These two are not enantiomers, so you can't separate them based on that. Also, yeah, you can't separate them based on that. A mass spectrometry analysis, okay? Them, since they are different molecules, and they're not, you know, isomers. They do have different masses, but that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work to be doing all that. You have to ionize it, look at your fragments, put them together in a data. Let's see if there's a better answer. An extraction based on their differing solubilities. I like this answer. But Eric, they're both polar. Don't they have the same solubility? No. Some molecules are more polar than others. Actually, if you want to get technical, all right, two methyl undecanal, which is this one, yeah, right, which is uh, this one, okay, could be this one or this one, all right, they're both enantiomers, but that's fine. Look at this molecule. Does this look polar to you? Rather, I would say rather not, okay. It has this long alkyl chain. That part's nonpolar. This is nonpolar, it's nonpolar. The only little polar thing is that carbonyl, but the majority of the molecule is nonpolar. This is like a neutral. I would say it's a neutral compound here. 2 methyl undecanoic acid is this, but with the OH hydroxyl group here. Every carboxylic acid has that polar region here. Carboxylic acid is way more polar than this molecule. Okay. They have different solubilities. Also, an extraction is actually what will separate it. Okay, this is analysis cool. Like, that's fine. You tell me data about it, but you're not actually telling me the method to extract it. Okay, look at what the question is asking. This is subtle, but a lot of you guys get this wrong. Okay, you're not looking at what the question is asking. Okay, the question is asking what method. So, what do you do at the answer choices? You find a method. This is not a method. This is just telling us information. Okay, this is similar to D. B and D are very similar. Okay. The SEM profiles, cool, nice information, bro. Like, thank you for that. But it's not giving me the method on what to do, okay? The method is an extraction. Extraction is a method. Therefore, this is the best answer choice, okay? Read the question. Hang on to every word in the question, guys. Use that technique. Trust me, all right? Answer C, and I'm very confident answer C. Boiling chips and vacuum distillation, respectively, are used in distillations to... Okay, this is a straight content of you guys. Um, boiling chips, they're used to prevent superheating. And the vacuum distillation, what happens in there is that instead of using a simple distillation, when you have liquids with a higher boiling point that you want to separate, use a vacuum distillation, not rather simple distillation. Okay, in the vacuum distillation, what you do is you lower the, lower the ambient pressure. And because you lower the ambient pressure, you're able to now boil the liquids at a lower temperature. Okay, that's what happens here. So provide nucleation sites. I like the superheating. I like this. Now where the boiling points of substance to be distilled work. Sorry, no, the boiling chips don't lower the boiling points. So B is wrong. Lower the boiling point substance to be distilled. No, the boiling chips don't do that. Okay, the boiling chips prevent the superheating. Provide nucleation sites that give the liquid a place to start forming bubbles to prevent superheating. Oh, yes. Speed up distillation process by vacuuming the first silly out of the apparatus. No, there's no, we're not vacuuming specific. That's not the point of the vacuum distillation. The point of having the vacuum, the vacuum itself um, makes the ambient pressure lower. That's the point of the vacuum. Okay, the vacuum doesn't do any like sucking, okay, necessarily. So answer is A here. 
the liquid remaining in the round bottom flask at the end of the procedure was most likely what? Okay. Ooh, great question again. Very high yield organic chem here, guys. Very, very high yield organic chem. A lot of AMC questions are, um, what has a higher boiling point? This or this? What's more polar? This or this? Rank these molecules in a boiling point from decreasing to increasing order. All right. Uh, a mixture consisting roughly of even amounts of the two components. No, because they finished the distillation. All right. Meaning that all the distillate was collected here. So we have all distillate and then all the um, original um, solution here. Okay. So you have the, all right, let me say that again. I messed up my wording. Okay. So the reason why it's not a mixture, the reason why it's not a, is because they finished the distillation process. Okay. They started with the, um, methyl undecanal and methyl decanoic acid. They started with those two here, but then they did the distillation process. And then the one with the lower boiling point, uh, evaporated, condensed, and was here in the receiving flask. All right. They finished it. We mean, when they say they finish it, they mean all two methyl decanal here and all two methyl decanoic acid here. Okay. That's what happens. So this is wrong. Okay. Two methyl decanal water condensed. From the, no, that's completely wrong. All right. So either B or D guys, what has a higher boiling point? Two methyl undecanal or two methyl undecanoic acid, and tell me why. Why does one have a higher boiling point than the other? All right. The answer is D. Okay. Two methyl undecanoic acid is a carboxylic acid, and it has a higher boiling point. Why does it have a higher boiling point? Well, it has a higher boiling point because it has that hydroxyl group, unlike the decanal, and the hydroxyl group can participate in hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding is a very strong intermolecular force. The stronger intermolecular force is, the more energy that's required to get something to boil. Okay? The more temperature you need to get something to boil. Also, um, this has a higher molecular weight because we have another oxygen here. But that's a little effect. It's more of the hydrogen bonding going on here. So, D is the answer. Alright, and that's it for this one, guys. As always, guys... If you're interested in working one-on-one -on -one with me inside MK University, okay, this is MK University. I'm going to give you guys a little sneak peek here. So this is MK University. We have 104 members there, okay, and you have, you're have you covered every step, everything you need for the MCAT, you're covered. All subjects, you're covered. You'll master your content. All breaking, you know, if you don't know how to break down passages correctly, you get lost in details, we have that covered as well. You have access to tutoring by me whenever you want, okay? So... Go ahead, guys. Interview. Sign up for MK University. I'll see you guys in the next video.